thank you so much. Ah, uh, wonderful artists here, yeah, the actors and all that. We will get to them in a short while, but we have two very important messages. One from General Noan, and of course, I want to let you know that Hubert Wigwe lives on. Professor. Professor Mara, please, uh, can we have you? Professor Mara uh, Kaide, I got that right. Woo! From Wigwe University, he has the word for us. And that message from General Gowan will be delivered by one man that the world respects. It, it, it will come in a minute. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You give me, I'll take only two minutes of your time, if you allow me. Good evening, distinguished guests. Permit me to stand on existing protocols. Dr. Herbert Woodway, our visionary founder, once said, and I quote, the world is changing and Nigeria is beginning to pay attention to young creative people. No matter the outcome, I urge you to keep telling your stories. Don't be scared to make your mark in the creative space. The future is beautiful. Dr. Herbert Bukway needs no introduction as an individual. Neither does his accomplishment, but I am here to share his vision for creative art education in Africa through Bukway University, which is the biggest social enterprise project yet by the Ho Foundation, founded eight years ago to intervene and support the education, health sectors, and empower our youth to face their future with the mindset that prepares them to embrace greatness and be fearless. The Deep Thinker has searched for a project that would create nexus between these three objectives and the result is Woodway University, an environment for a quality education in life care mentorship of you young African with very fearless leaders, entrepreneurship, innovators, and highly skilled graduates in the future of Africa is a bright. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Please, can we put it together for him? He that we will is on. And this message from General Yakub Gowan is going to be delivered by none other than the highly respected former Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Chief Emeka Ayoko, His Excellency. Now, I need you to pay attention to how English is spoken. It's not my own. <laughs> Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My first words must be to thank the Duke of Shomolu Foundation for this most thrilling, most thrilling performance of Gawan. This is an occasion when the subject of the play, General Yakubu Gawan, telephoned me from London, where he is at the moment, to express his great regret that he was not able to be here, and to plead with me, in addition to representing myself, to represent him and give a message to the cast and to the Duke of Shomoru Foundation. I believe that what we've just seen has confirmed the fact that uh, the Duke of Shomoru, who is the mover and the driving force behind what we have seen, his real name, his Christian name, I believe, is Joseph Edgar. But he is better known, better known as the Duke of Shomolu. And uh, I'd like to congratulate 
and the members of the caste. And to say that what I have seen and read about Duke of Sobolu Productions, this is not the first one, but he has become an accomplished producer of stories about our eminent persons in Nigeria. He did produce a play on Aremu, he called it, that is Chief Olusheku Obasanjo. He produced a play on Awo, Chief Obafemi Awolowo. He produced a play on uh, the historical event, the Aba Women's Riots of 1929, which I believe he called um, Isok Eban? Yes, Ufok Eban. He has become what in other parts of the world, particularly the United States, would be described as an Oscar-winning producer. The Duke of Shomaru has continued to depict the stories of our eminent persons. I was thrilled watching the Gawan production this evening. And in very large part, it was a true story, a true depiction of Gawan. I was particularly touched by the incident of the then head of uh, national security, M.D. Yusuf, going to warn Gawan that there was a coup being prepared by people like uh, Joseph Garba, who I believe was the head of his presidential guards, and he could not believe that. Well, I think that in the end, God loved him because he spared his life and the coup took place while he was away in Kampala. So may I thank the institutions and the individuals who have supported this production. I think it's a good thing to see that institutions and individuals at this time when our environment is becoming more and more materialistic, to see institutions and individuals who take interest in promoting our culture. And I hope and pray that the Duke of Shomalu will continue to get support from these institutions and these individuals. If I myself were one of the so-called money bags, I know what I would be doing with my money. I would be supporting the Duke of Shomalu. So finally, I want to say again, thank you all to the members of the cast, and in particular, to the young lady who's come all the way from London to play the role of Victoria Gowan. And uh, Gowan, as we were told, will be 90 this year. Will be 90 in October. And I believe that a book will be published on Gowan at 90. I believe so because I've been asked to contribute a chapter to the book. Gowan, and I've done so. I'm particularly glad to welcome Gowan into the non Nigerian club to which I belong. I teased 
Gowan. I call him Jack Gowan because I'm one year older than he is. And it be a great celebration his 90th birthday. And I wish that this cast would be taken abroad. I know that the Duke of Shomanu is planning to take the very successful production he did on Zeke, Zeke of Africa. I believe he is planning to take that to the United Kingdom. And uh, I'm uh, discussing with him the possibility of my being there too. Um, so to all of you, I say again, congratulations. Now let's give it up for him, Jesus, let's go ahead and Now, welcome back from the Queensland. Let me touch on you with my own English. <laughs> we want to say a very big thank you. I don't know what we would have done without Unity Bank. Please, a big round of applause for Unity Bank. A big round of applause for First Bank. Another one for Fidelity. It's an endless list. It's an endless list. For me, while I'm um, presenting the Duke of Shabalu, just a minute. Please, guys, just, just give us two seconds. Uh, just wait, 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 wait. You guys, wait now. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, okay. Um, we said honor, because we, we, we honor historical people, and then some people are more historical than others. That's why we don't wait. Like, come on, the messenger. Ayako, Shodimu, <laughs> But this August here, most of you this one were not born when what happened to him happened to him. This is um, Mr. Tunde Thompson. Mr. Tunde Thompson was among was one of the two pressmen that was jailed in 1984 on that degree four. Now, most of you here do not know the import of that action. We were under a military government by head of state who came back how many years after to be president. You know? And, and he needed him to reveal his sources for a particular story, and he refused. And then they promulgated a decree and backdated it to catch it. Now what he's done for those of us who are doing social media today is phenomenal. Because if he didn't stand, we may not have the press freedom that we have today. That's why I have said that you guys should wait so that you can understand what's going on. So, uh, gold and silver we don't have. If I were using only some cars. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have money to give this Tunde Thompson. But we said to honor him today so that you make a can use his British accent. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who symbolizes the best ethics in journalism. And he paid a huge price for it. As uh, Duke of Shogun told you, a special edit was passed and backdated in order to catch this gentleman. And they caught him and imprisoned him. We are so glad to see you today and to join in acknowledging what you represent, because you represent one of the highest ethics in journalism, which is never reveal your soul. So 
thank you again. And uh, there is a token presentation to you. Okay, two more minutes or two more minutes or let me quickly meet the people that give us the money for you people because so I don't give us money next time. You know this people are very you know, just this was 40 million. So I have to see. Um, let me give this opportunity to you. Is here. This is the first time he's watching a play. I checked him, I sent him a text, I said please. And he says, if you schedule for me to you'll be here. Yeah. He says, thank you so much, Mr. Tony. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this is, uh, his wife, Mrs. Um, Elubelu, and, and the family. And, and I hope the next uh, social media post, you put my picture there. You have more food like a meal. Yeah? So I also want to thank um, Terry Otubu, um, Gabriel Ubeche. These are the money bags that gave us all of this, um, uh, His Excellency Aki Rumiya Mbode is not here, I gave out his chairs. And then Wigwe University, Wigwe University, through the Howe Foundation, you know, we've done so well. They supported us in London and supported us here now. Please just bear with me, I need to call all of them because they can be very finicky. Mr. Elubi, you are calling in. Like, keep calling. Are you okay? Everyone just look at us and come on, come on. Free are okay? You're happy? Okay. Then, um, people are Yeah? Sadi, Bani, Chairman, Yeah? And then, we have Unity Bank and all of this. The one, the one gave us 44 corporate sponsors. That's the highest ever in a grand Thank you so much. Semba, we are three years here. All of you come. Stick up. Stick up. Don't do the mission. Whatever it's going to cost, that name must come out of my mouth. Tony Elumelu and family. Okay, okay, I just called your name. Tony Elumelu, what a time. Let's give up for you one more time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, PSA is going to be on stage next. December, that's our this December, and you it's it's wonderful, I'll tell you. Thank you for coming around. God bless you, really good. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you.